Welcome to another K-Series podcast. Today we've got Todd Madgwick, who uh, has recently joined the Koloshi team. Uh, Todd has uh, taken over the role of our new Head of Property Management and Commercial Leasing. Welcome, Todd. Thank you, Michael. Pleasure to be here. Mate, let's probably start with uh, just a bit of a background on you and your career and where you've, um, where you've been working previously and, uh, and some of your experience. Okay. I've um, been in real estate for 23 years now. I think it's clicked over. My career started in Sydney, um, born and raised in the eastern suburbs of Sydney, um, and then um, had a bit of a hiatus and did some travelling um, in between, met my wife overseas and um, came back and, and her family was located in the Northern Rivers, um, Southern Gold Coast region. So we used to come up here frequently and fell in love with the area. Um, so that was our first sort of connection with the area. Um, we then purchased a property up here, just an investment to start with. Um, and then from there, we um, made a decision, it was a, pretty, a snap decision to relocate. Um, I think the lifestyle that we, growing up on the beach in the eastern suburbs, was being able to get home and run down the beach after school and things like that. I wanted that for my kids. It got harder and harder in the eastern suburbs. And I think I resonated a lot with the Gold Coast, especially the southern area. So in that Kira and Coolangatta pocket there. So... Um, we made the move, it was quite abruptly, um, uh, we got married and then basically moved up after that um, and then had our kids not long after that. So um, yeah, and never never regretted it for a second moving up here. Um, and yeah. so were you working remotely while you were doing that or, or so who were, you, who were you working with at the time? When I was overseas? No, when you were back here, um, your first PM roles. Oh, so my first PM role, so down in Sydney, I was with, um, I was lucky enough to work with some great businesses yep. in Sydney. Um, I was predominantly based in Double Bay, most of my career yep. down there. Um, so I got to work with, you know what I mean, the, the top businesses. So I was with Lang and Simmons, Double Bay, Ray White, Double Bay. Um, and I, but I first started off with PRD, Double Bay, which yep. was, um, which was probably my first step into that market, dealing with high end clientele, prestige properties, high expectations. So for me, that was um, a bit of a shock to the system, but it was such a good grounding for me. And I had a great group of business owners and leaders that mentored me, um, which I still use a lot of the tricks and tips they embedded into me to how to manage people and coach people as well. So, um, and then from there, moved up here and um, aligned with, with the Ray White group, just because I was with Ray White Double yep. Bay when I first transitioned up. Um, but uh, not to, to say anything against them, but I just there was a bit of a, a difference of performance levels coming from Double Bay and then come up to the Gold Coast. And that was a bit of a shock to the system. So when McGrath moved up here... Um, so not as polished up here as, uh, as it was down there? Do or? you know what? I just think the standards were a lot different when yeah. I first moved up. And that was, what, 14 years ago yeah. now? So it was really, it was a tough, that was the, the, the personal life was easy to adjust. The work life was a lot different to adjust. Yep. So moving up here and trying to adjust to that work life. Um, and I was a team manager at that stage across the Ray White group. So I was working across the, uh, the Surface Paradise, multiple offices, managing the PM business there at that stage. Um, McGrath came up. Um, I knew McGrath growing up in the eastern suburbs. It yep. was kind of the, the pinnacle of real estate during my um, teenage years. Um, it was an attraction business. Everyone wanted to be there. Um, so when they came up, I aligned with them um, and I transitioned over there. And that's where I felt comfortable again yep. um, in that high performance culture, growth mindset, which is really important to me. I like to be always moving forward yep. and I want to take the team and I want to develop the team. I want to grow and I want to do great things all the time. So if I'm not aligned with the right business, I feel like I'm stagnating and I just feel I get anxious. Yep. Yep. So um, where did you follow from there with McGrath? Was it always up here or did you, did you do other stuff in the state with them? Or So my, my role with McGrath started off as a general manager yep. across Gold Coast and Brisbane. Um, John's mandate, I think we had three or 400 properties. John's mandate was like we want to do 2,000 within the company-owned business, which is not a franchise, still owned and operated by, by John um, and the MEA group. So that was, again, great, love it. I'd rather aim high and miss than aim low and hit. So I was like, great, let's aim for 2,000. Um, and that was another really big growth phase for me in terms of how to manage that. I've never been in a, in a business where I've been um, in charge of such a, a lofty goal. And John was a really hard taskmaster as well. Mm -hmm. So um, every, th every time I'd go off track a little bit, John would pull me back in pretty quickly. Yep. Um, so that was really important for me. So that was for about seven years I did that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I always had aspirations. I wanted the top job, which was the head of franchise property management for McGrath. So I kind of kept working up towards that. And then I got an opportunity um, within about seven, eight years at McGrath. Um, the, the head of PM left and I took on that role. I'd, I'd been doing some franchise coaching across New South Wales. My role was a performance manager. So I was doing dual roles at that mm -hmm. time. Um, and I had about 1,800 properties. We had 22 staff across Gold Coast and Brisbane uh, in six offices that I was managing at that time, as well as trying to get to the franchise offices from basically Townsville to Coffs Harbour, uh, to Port Macquarie was my region. Mm -hmm. um, so that was another good learning experience about managing time and prioritising the key things within business. So um, so then, yeah, that led to the, to the franchise um, head of property management role, which, um, which I did for about 18 months. Mm -hmm. Um, great. Look, it was it was a moment for me to tick something off the box that I was a, a lofty goal for me, and that's I'm very goal driven, um, as you know. And we've set goals together now as, uh, after joining here, and I, that really that's what I aim for. I need that north star that I'm always going towards. Um, otherwise, I get off track, and it's same whether it's with fitness, whether it's business, family, all of that. I need that goal. Yeah. Yeah. Clear direction. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so your time after McGrath, where was it then? Was it Pell? Yeah, so, so I, I got the um, head of PM role. I was there for 12, 18 months. Look, McGraw was going through some changes um, and I thought it was there. I was there 10 years all up, which, um, which was another good milestone for myself to prove to myself that I've got longevity within business as well. Um, and then I'd been speaking to Peter Hanscom, the CEO of Bell, um, and he wanted to create a role because he, he basically sat down and goes, what do you love? And I, look, growth is obviously, my, my mindset always growth, growth, growth. So he said, um, why don't we create a role from you? We've got a head of PM, he said, but I think you would get bogged down in too much of the, the admin and logistics. We need you to focus on just growing the business um, and, and with working with principals specifically. So he created a role where I was uh, basically an in-house consultant for Bell. Uh, my title was head of growth and performance for the property management division. And it was a paid service. So um, principals would engage me on a monthly basis to work with them. Um, whether it be BDM coaching, whether it be structural, um, looking at P&Ls, how to understand their P&Ls, how to get their profit margins, how to look at uh, their business from a PM, how to separate their PM and sales businesses. Because predominantly all these business owners are sales owners. So PM kind of just becomes as a, a necessary evil that they bring into the business because they've got clients that they need to refer, et cetera. Yep. So for me, it was um, educating them. Um, and it was a great role and I got to work with, and again, I've been blessed that I, I get to work nationally. So I get to see all the top businesses across the country, across multiple brands now. Um, and look, it was good. The, cha the cha only challenge with that, um, love the brand, the people, it was a great experience, was just to travel. Yep. So I had clients in WA, I was traveling to Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney, pretty consistently, and then working in, in Queensland. Um, I've got a young family, I've got two young kids. Um, and it was always my aspiration to get back to the Gold Coast where it all started for me again yep. um, and, yeah, build something, yeah, that, that I could have a real impact on with a great business. Yeah, great. Obviously, you've found your feet now with us <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I think from our perspective, fortunate to get someone with uh, the level of experience that you've had and, um, and obviously talking through all that gives um, some pretty good context to the uh, – the amount of businesses that you've had exposure to and um, and what works and what doesn't. So mm. I guess um, something to probably talk about that uh, that's quite prominent in the media these days is that um, we're getting to a point now where um, for a lot of people they may end up renting for their entire life mm. um, because it's becoming harder for people to actually buy homes and, um, and so we're starting to see a bit of a change in that and um, I guess... Um, one thing we've spoken about is uh, is this sort of tenant first mentality as well. How do we start to treat them the same way that you're treating a landlord? And and uh, previously uh, there's been a uh, sort of an underlying tone within most of this industry that um, that they're not treated to the, or given the same level of respect. Um, I was talking to someone this morning said that they've been trying to get a rental and no one even rings them back mm -hmm. um, with other businesses. So uh, so there's a real change in philosophy around how do you actually look after them so that they want to stay as long as possible and um, and the experience is just as good for them and then they take care of the dwelling and the property and you have better relationships and obviously uh, your landlords win as well as a byproduct. Great question. I think for me, I, I learned very early on that every person 
you interact with, you have to have a long-term approach. It's like it's translating into sales. It's not just having that sort of commission breath where you're just focusing on that short-term transaction and looking at looking at them in a dollar value capacity. We've got to look at them as clients for life. Mm. Um, whether they're and most of the people are all interacting in all different areas of our business. Yeah, so many of them are clients for life. Like yeah. you're seeing people coming out of big homes, renting while they're building or renting in the interim until they can find something else. We're seeing people migrate up from interstate that want to rent before they buy. Um, so you, you're getting a lot of those similar touch points and you're also mm. seeing that with the commercial leasing that you've got high net worth individuals that own commercial properties that are now wanting that. So I think it's critical that they're obviously getting that same uh, experience across every sector of the business. And look, it's been a challenging one. It's mm. a, um, it's changing the, the mindset of, um, of the, the people that are working within that department, trying to create the right incentive structures to support them to grow and, and obviously be remunerated for the level of work um, the effort and the care that they take. So it's a, yeah, it's not an easy task, but um, looking mm. forward to, uh, to how you tackle it. <laughs> Look, again, you've got to, like I said, you've just got to have a, a long-term mentality, I think. Um, my philosophy, and this is something we're starting to work with the team, that we've just got to help them no matter what. We've got to care about what we do and we've yep. got to help them. I don't care if they go end up leasing, if we don't have the stock and they end up leasing a property or if they go manage with someone else. I just want them to have that experience when they've dealt with Koloshi and the property management, uh, residential, commercial side of it, they remember that experience. That's what creates clients for life, those yep. memorable moments, those wow moments where they go, okay, wow, not only did they call me back but they followed me up and then they were, they were genuinely happy that I, found, I got an outcome and it wasn't with Colossi, but we may not, we're not going to be able to help the whole Gold Coast. That's mm. just a fact of life. But we can impact a lot of people. Every person we, we come in contact with, we need to leave an impact. And I like, that's what I like. It's those moments of impact which really drive me because, and we share them and we create a culture where that is our purpose. The rest will, the rest will all happen. And we just, client focused is everything, long term mentality is everything. So probably let's touch on the uh, the current landscape of the uh, the property management sector on the Gold Coast. Obviously, we've been through some times at the moment where there's low vacancy rates and um, and and limited properties coming to market, and it's been a challenging time for tenants. Um, do you want to sort of cover some of that? Yeah. Look, at the moment, the stats sort of read that the, the vacancy rate sitting about one point four on the Gold Coast in general. Um, back end of last year was sitting just under one percent. So we're starting to see, you know what I mean, the, the supply and demand level sort of balancing. They're not balancing out, but you know what I mean, the supply is still there. The demand is probably dropping off a little bit. Um, at the moment, last time I checked, I think we had about over 3,000 pieces of stock on market on the Gold Coast. 30% of that is over $1,000 now. So I think that's probably at the highest we've seen on the Gold Coast as well, which means obviously we've seen an increase in, in um, average rentals in that market space as well. Um, and we're now, look, the market in general, look, we've still got a shortage of stock like we're seeing in sales and all these other different areas at the moment. Um, clients are more understanding of the market. Um, and the Gold Coast being tradition, like transient in its nature, obviously the winter months we start to see the, spot, the, the vacancy rate, you know what I mean, blow out a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's still at record lows. Yeah. Like, that's the fact of, of the matter at the moment. So going back to what you said before about um, client experience, we've got, to, we've got to understand the tenant side because they're the ones that are really struggling to find property. It doesn't matter what area of the market, if it's in the prestige or it's in um, the below $1,000 market as well. It's amazing uh, from an affordability point of view, the amount of people that are renting properties at three, four, five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a week, mm. um, which is an enormous amount of money that you need to make um, sort of pre-tax yeah. just to be able to pay those. And uh, yeah. But we're seeing it, it's quite common and... Um, and uh, yeah, the, obviously the average rental has increased considerably over the last probably three or four years, but of, in line with the prices. Yeah, and I think rent investors are a big part of that. Mm. Um, people who are renting and then own property and they can see the benefits. Obviously, they get the, the tax benefits of, of renting out their own property and then leasing themselves as well. Um, you've got business. You've got obviously the, all the industries we've got on the Gold Coast as well, um, which sort of help prop all that up. Um, but it's still only a small, like as I said, 30% at the moment is as, as at a high level. Um, I would predict as we move into more into the colder months, I think we'll start to see that drop a little bit more. So how does the uh, top end of the market differ in your opinion when it comes to leasing and, and service of those clientele? It's, it's totally different. It's, um, the top end is all about relationships. 
not that the bottom end is, but it's, it's a much higher level of relationships. So there's a lot of stock that doesn't come to market. There's a lot of clientele that we deal with that don't want it to go to market. They don't want the publicity um, around that when it goes to market. So we need to make sure that what we call like a hot tenants list and, and we nurture all those prospective tenants that are sitting there waiting. So when a property comes to market, it's just a matter of matching that, ten that perfect tenant up to the perfect property based on their needs. So there's definitely the pool is a lot smaller. So we have to be switched on. Um, and for me, look, seven weeks into this business now, the great benefit of Koloshi is we've got an amazing like proven sales business, obviously led by yourself, that has a great network of people. So we can always lean into that because that network is is worth its weight in gold for us to be able to connect those people, not only from landlords, from tenants perspective, as you mentioned, like we've got people moving all, all the time. So we need to facilitate that. But if there's a tenant out there who's got a, a high, high price bracket, we can go to our client base and even ask people whether it's in sales or in the property management department and see if they would potentially move out to accommodate them. Um, because And that's a relationship we need with all our clients. So they could potentially you know, head overseas, move into an investment property, do whatever they need if they're going to get a high-end return for a short period of time. So potential landlords watching this, um, I guess they're always asking questions about, okay, I've got a $15, $20 million home, apartment. Um, I'm concerned that if I rent it out, it's going to get knocked around. What yep. protections do I have? How far above and beyond do you go in order to ensure that your selection of tenant is is appropriate that everything's maintained um, so how do you give someone comfort around those things when they do have a prestige home because I guess for a lot of people um, you might be able to get a, a significant rent but it's also uh, very easy to do significant damage that outweighs the the rent that someone might pay um, through wear and tear and um, and also um, just not taking care of, of the property during their uh, their time or their tenure yeah, not the same. And that's the expectations that landlords, especially, I'd say 50% of the stock we deal in the top end is furnished as well. So you've got furnishings that have financial and emotional meaning and relevance to every client as well. Um, but the first thing I'll say is, look, our, our staff, we're overstaffed to make sure we can service that because we know the needs of our clients on both ends, tenants and landlords mm -hmm. alike. So we need to make sure that, the, that whether it be the, the level of detail in the entry condition report, using video, using all the technology at our disposal, um, making sure that we create that concierge, I love that hospi hospitality mentality, uh, um, yeah, mentality where it's, you've got to treat them like they're a guest in a way and just give them and go above and beyond. How they get on board it is critical as well. Um, maintaining the property, yeah, we've got the, the, um, the routine in inspections that go on. We've got a very thorough um, inventory inspection with photos. We can always improve in that area. So that's my job as well, to go out and make sure that we're using the best technology, we're using the best processes. Um, and again, thankfully for my, my history and my career, I've, I can tap into all these people around the country as well to go, okay, is this the best thing we can do in this space? Um, so the clients, it has to be, again, goes back to that client first mentality, but there is a lot of processes and procedures in the back end to make sure we don't miss anything. Because when you're dealing with, um, we had one recently where we had an acreage where you've got a, you've got a, a, a lagoon, you've got a tropical garden, it's on multiple um, acres, it's got three residences on it. Um, you can't just put a standard garden maintenance clause in there either. It has to be specific. Yeah. So that level of detail has to be at the top end as well. So we meet both ends of ex, uh, their um, expectations. Yeah, so setting those expectations Absolutely. early, making sure that everyone's crystal clear around what it is and then uh, uh, obviously making sure from our, our side of it that the team are on top of it. So, so um, I guess when we're – we've just spoken about landlords. So when we're referring to the, the tenants for their experience, how do we get to a point where we have that six-star experience? I, I know that's the goal yep. um, in order to ensure that people that are renting with us want to continue renting with us, that they have such a, an amazing experience. We see so many instances where um, where people will be paying, and there was one the other day where uh, where a tenant was paying $6,500 a week, and then next thing you've got uh, competitor agents banging on the door trying to get in to sell it. Um, without uh, the landlords giving the appropriate notices and um, and then they're harassing tenants and like how do we how do we start to get to a point where we can create the best experience possible for them um, and also ensure that they get service things get fixed quickly that mm. we're responsive um, I, I assume it's being able to be overstaffed makes a a, a big difference there but um, what what are the solutions and what are your thoughts 
yeah, overstaffed is a big thing to make sure we've got the team's got the time and attention because uh, look, we try and be as proactive as possible, but there are times when things are reactive where something happens at the property, whether it's a, a maintenance issue or whatnot, and the team need to be ready to address that. So speed is critical, mm-hmm. like getting onto it quickly and hopefully we've established an, a relationship with them. And it goes back to that. If we've got a good relationship with the tenant and we're treating the tenant like a client, which they are, so I put tenant and landlord on exactly the same level. They're, just, they're both clients of ours, so we just want to wow both of them. So how they get on board is really critical, managing those expectations, making sure they get all the relevant information before they move into the property, making sure we're following up with our touch calls. What we call them value calls. Um, other businesses, we used to call them good news calls, happy calls. I want value calls. So when, I, when our team will call you, it's not just to say, hi, Michael, how are you? Uh, just letting you know the property's going great. I want to go, okay, did you know this is the, the, the latest update on the light rail? We've got these developments going on. Um, we've got these traffic blockages that will impact your property. Or we've got investment opportunities for you. We want to make sure that when we're calling them, we're adding value to their experience with Koloshi, full stop. Um, and, and then we've got to make sure we've got the best tech process and people like it's really important for me to make sure we've got the team that can deliver on all of that. It's all good to have that rattling around in my head, but I've got to make sure we've got world-class people in the office that can deliver on that, um, which we do when we're going to continue to grow and develop. We've got a big growth phase, so we, we're always looking for great people out there to come and um, and even if we don't have a role, look for great people, we'll always look for opportunities within our team. I guess uh, it's that proactive approach where if you're calling a tenant once a month, just to see how everything's going, rather than waiting for them to ring you and say, "Hey, I got a problem," um, or likewise with a uh, with a landlord, "Hey, just ch- touching base," um, and being proactive in that communication, um, then you can get on top of it. You can find out if there is anything that needs to be attended mm-hmm. to, so that uh, things aren't just sitting there and waiting until a uh, a condition report or an entry uh, inspection that's being done and. Uh, so I think um, that's probably got to be, and, and I know it's something we've spoken about, a big focus moving forward. Yeah, and I think with um, the happy calls is for tenants and landlords. Mm. The value calls, should I say, are for tenants and landlords because, again, if we're going to – traditionally businesses might just do them for landlords because that's where they see the value, but the tenants, especially in our business and our clientele, is 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 just as equal to, to our landlords. Um, so that's really critical to make sure we're doing that as well. Now that we're focused on obviously expanding and growing the team, um, what is your sort of plan there with that and, and, and empowering the team and helping them grow and, and become better at what they're doing? Look, I want the world's best property management department. That's it. Like if, you don't, if you're not aiming for that, um, there's steps and milestones and that we need to get to. Um, but we've got to do it the right way, making sure that we're client first, customer first, customer focused throughout each step so we're not compromising on that. Um, so that's getting the right people. Um, we've got goals about what we want to get and, and that's properties under management, but it's also managing our customer experience. So I know we're working together to try and get a system so we get the voice of the customer, which is really important. Yep. Um, it's hard sometimes for, to get an understanding of how, we, how we're tracking with our clients. So we want to get some surveys out there through each transaction to make sure we get touch points with the client, to make sure we get that voice of the customer consistently. Um, and that will be the biggest measurable for me of, of how we're tracking. It's good to see the business growing, um, which, which will inevitably happen um, with the processes and standards. So we're going to be being a big focus on growth and marketing. Um, the world's our oyster on the Gold Coast. I think if we can deliver on what our expectations are, um, we will be an attraction business in the PM space in a, in a very short space of time. Um, and that's, that was really attractive for me coming here. Like it's a world-class sales business um, so it's a great lever for me to then to build a world-class property management business off the brand um, and what you and the team have achieved um, since its inception. On that note, what do you think um, are areas in which sort of generally the uh, the leasing industry and, and PM can improve across the Gold Coast industry and even on a larger scale? I think more of a, a tailored, personalised approach is probably where it starts. Yep. Traditionally businesses, it's an entry-level role for a lot of businesses. So you're getting people who have very little experience coming in. Um, the experience for the client is they're opening the door, they're standing there um, and they're walking through and they're walking out. There's a 15-minute inspection. So for us and what I think the, the industry needs to look at is making sure that we can, again, have another moment of impact in that. Like that could be a client that could like be for us for a long period of time. So we need to make sure we impact them, making sure we've got the experience within the team. We're asking the right questions. We're following through 
that we're giving them valuable information they can walk out with as well. Um, really important. Again, we want them to walk out, go home, sit down on the, the kitchen bench with their partner, family, whatever it may look like, and they're discussing Koloshi. We might not have the property that's that's the right fit for them, but we need to make sure that they're remembering us and that that in, that that relationship they're going to have with us over a period of time. And we nurture that relationship regardless if we can service them now. So the biggest thing I would say is getting the right people with experience, having a bespoke approach to it. So not just doing standardised open for inspections, just putting a time in the calendar, no one turns up. So we traditionally try to buy appointments to service, yeah. the, to allow our, our clients to be there at their needs as well, where we can. Obviously, we've got a, a lot of properties we need to manage and, and things around that as well. But we try and tailor our inspections based on the client needs as well. And I guess uh, the property management division, um, with the greatest respect, a lot of people haven't sort of said, hey, this is where I want to have my career. Mm -hmm. Sort of been an entry into real estate and then moving into different roles. So um, I know we spoke about how do we create such an amazing environment there that's rewarding uh, both financially but also um, in other ways for the team so that they, uh, they're they really enjoying that, they're getting value out of it and uh, and then growing and uh, and wanting to continue and, uh, and be the best versions of themselves and, and obviously provide that six-star level of service on the way through. So um, have you got any thoughts around that that you want to share? That's, that's probably what in the top three of my job is to develop people. Yep. So... No business will have success without the right people and having longevity in those with those people. So my history is I've got a lot of people that started with me um, in relatively entry-level roles that ended up taking over my role. And that's my job is to develop them to make sure that they're getting the experience and they're moving forward continuously. So, yeah, like I said, I'm very much driven on like that they've got a purpose and a goal um, inside and outside of work. So I, I have goal sheets with the teams that sort of – I want them to invest in property. I want them to grow wealth. I want them to educate themselves. I want them to be successful in life because that will make a better member of the team as well as a better experience for them. So, yeah, look, it's always – people are always going to look at other shiny things out there and it's obviously money and whatnot that people tend – but I feel like if you've got a progression plan and they know that they're going to get developed and they're going to have great experiences, they're going to have amazing fun while we do it, which is another big part. We've got to make it a fun, happy environment – they will stay on board. And I've proven that over time with my with team members in the past that they've had other offers from other agencies and they haven't taken it because we've created an environment and a, um, a progression plan that they know that they're going to be successful and, and have some hit some of the goals that they or we work together to um, to plot out for them. Um, so it's, yeah, it, look, it's, it's, a, it's a critical part, the, the progression with the teams, yeah. And it's not, look... It's not an exact science. You can do everything you need. You can do personality index. You can do multiple interviews. Sometimes it just doesn't work out and you're just not on the same trajectory. Yep. Um, but traditionally, you know what I mean, if we get the right people willing to work hard, we can coach them up and train them up to be amazing what they do, world class. So probably one last thing, um, Todd, is, um, is why Koloshi? Look, for me, coming back to the coast, and it was always on my agenda, but – it had to be the right business for me. Like it's a big decision. I want this is a long term decision for me. So I wanted to make sure that it was the right one for myself and my family. And um, so yeah, when conversations began with yourself and the team, um, there was an alignment. Look, the brand itself, it's it's a no brainer, and the presence got on the Gold Coast. But the opportunity, where the business is at now, and where it can go, and having the capacity across the whole Gold Coast. Um, in other brands, I've always been limited by like franchise regions and, and, and yeah, barriers yeah, within yeah. franchises. Yep. We've got the whole Gold Coast. Yep. So we can build an amazing team that services the whole Gold Coast and make everyone understand the power of Koloshi uh, in the property management space as well. So yeah, look, a no brainer. I love the brand. And it, look, it's, it's exceeded expectations for me coming on board as well. The experience leading up to it was great. Um, now coming on board, the team is amazing, uh, very welcoming. And um, it's a great platform and a great environment for, um, for exceeding. All right. Well, thanks, um, Todd, for coming on. And I think uh, that shared quite a few insights on what we're planning to do as a business, but also um, on some of your experience. And um, yeah, I'm sure uh, everyone will be getting a lot out of it. Thanks, Michael. Look, it's great to be here. Um, great to be part of the business. I'm really excited. Um, it's been, you know what I mean, um, head down, bum up for the first six weeks. And it's been great. We've got a lot of progress. And I'm excited for the for the people of the Gold Coast to get to experience um Koloshi property management across commercial and uh, residential in the future.
Yeah, and look, we're lucky to have you, so I'm glad that uh, you've made the decision, mate. Appreciate <laughs> Thank you. It.